Thank you. Let's give all glory to God. Let's bless each other. Be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. With the firstborn blessing in this two, three, seven age, let us raise the 10,000 uh, church members. Uh, I'm looking forward to the work of God. Right now, God's precious work is upon us. And we're giving this worship in this new, uh, newly said. Newly said lecture hall and really receive all the grace. And really look forward to what God will do inside of your lives. We're giving this worship in this uh, first day of this newly said main lecture hall. It might seem a little bit uh, uncomfortable. Currently, they're trying to fix the sound systems and the broadcast systems, so they're working late in the late night. And I saw many people who spent overnight to work on this. If you see on your seats, the part that to seal that place up, uh, it came a little late at night yesterday, so they were working very late at night. I really uh, understand that it may be a little bit uncomfortable until everything is fixed. And right now, they're uh, trying to figure out the sound systems and the broadcast system. And they're also working late during the night. <laughs> if you just heard uh, my voice as a and the message as the just the pe pastor's voice, but now you can hear. God's word in this newly set sound system. I really give thanks. I, was, I gave thanks who the el for the elders who follow after the word to do this work. And I gave thanks to the, our believers who placed their hearts and prayer for the 237. Uh, I, gave, I give thanks to the commissioners and the chairmen. And there are people who are related to each of the departments to make this job work. And I, I want to say thanks. And I really bless that God's grace is upon you. And let's give all glory to God again.
It's been about 17 to 18 years since we moved our church. And we were in the Songyeon district, but we moved to Sangin district. And we we're in the neighborhood of Sangin, and God has opened up the door for 237 nation. And I can see that everyone's heart is placed inside of this. I told you before during the Friday night service. Last Sunday, I was inside of my office uh, after the worship, and one elder sent me a text, and it was uh, one picture. And during the offering time, uh, maybe this person came out after prayer. But this person had gold necklace, gold rings, and he had sets of them and brought it as an offering to the office. And I was able to see that how many people are praying for our construction. And this, I received another cacao message. And this person said, I am a believer who lives in Gwangju, Gwangju region. This person had no relations with our church, but was receiving a grace from our church. And this person wanted to uh, pray for the construction of our church. It might be a little bit small, but I want to uh, participate in this. And I said thank you and gave the person our uh, account number for the construction. And because uh, this person really uh, asked me so that he can uh, give his offering. That is why I told him the account number. And even in Japan, overseas, they also gave offering for this construction. And there are members who gave offering who used to come to our church but is in a different region right now. But I was able to confirm that God gave them the heart so that they can participate in this uh, construction. I thought to myself, what is God's plan for this 237 so that other people, God will move the hearts of other people so that they can participate in this construction. This is the message that is given from the evangelist of who is Pastor Ryu. We must receive the blessing that will be remembered in later on. That is why if you see in our uh, meeting room, you can see a banner that says 
the church that will be remembered later on. I was able to come to a conclusion that God really had the blessing for this church and wanted to bless this church for the 237 and the next generation. We can say that we have a lot of finance, but for this construction, But this isn't just so that we can uh, listen to the word in a very uh, fashionable place. God will bless your ne prosperities, next generation, and, and the 237, and yourself, and your business, please. We are preparing for our next generation. But this isn't through our own motives. We're not coming to this as, with our own motives. If you look at the Bible, you can see that what God really wants. is raising the next generation and for the 237. Isn't that what God really wants? With this exact gospel, God wants to save the next generation and the 237. This is what really what God wants. If you're really walking the walk of faith, then you must make God happy. And when you place God's work inside of your heart and in your, inside of your prayer, then God will bless you in every step. Our... Uh, Our elder pastor said in 2005, the year 2005, how did God allow us such a beautiful uh, uh, temple, or a beautiful church? But the answer to that was because we stayed inside of missions and our church was used for uh, missions. That is why God gave us this uh, church as a present. God has used us in advance so that we can do this missions uh, for overseas. And so that we, He can use us for this missions so God has blessed our church. And we are inside of a new age right now. We're inside of the age where we cannot uh, refuse. It's the corona pandemic. And because of this corona pandemic, and we're inside of the corona age, the contact-free contact is becoming a contact. 
That is why we must really prepare for the contact-free system. And even the evangelism must take place contact-free. And even your businesses, it must, you must prepare for the contact-free in order for you to survive. You must remember making contact-free to contact. The evangelism will take place in contact, contact free. And God has sent the Israelites as a slave, captives, and colonization. Why did God allow this uh, work to happen to send the Israelites into slave, captives, and con colonization? And you can see that um, uh, centering around the superpower nations, God has sent the Israelites as a slave. God didn't just send the Israelites as a slave. You can see just as, as if the Israelites went as a slave. But they had to go. They must be there. Even the people who did did realize the gospel and people who didn't realize the gospel, they must go as a slave. And that is because that is the plan of God. And you can see that the many superpower nations attack it, the Israelites. And for Israel, Israel, they uh, many superpower nations started a war. If you see the region of Israel, it is surrounded by the superpower nation. And all that superpower nation all proclaimed war on upon Israel. This was the happening that God has allowed. They became uh, captivated and colonized. There was one nation Uh, one superpower nation, and God has sent the Israelites as a slave captives and colonization to do the movement of the gospel movement. But right now, many uh, superpower nations has arisen to start even a first world war and second world war. And that time, God has separated them as the uh, the nomadic tribes the method of God is to save is the method to save people and the method of God is 237 what the Bible talks about the most important thing that's inside the Bible is is the 237. In Genesis 1, 27 to 28, is talking about the 237. And God has called uh, Abraham out of Chaldea and promised Abraham, and said, through you, uh, all nations will receive blessings, and that all nation is 237. It's giving us those very important answer. Then how can we go towards the 237? It is contact free. And it's the media. Without that, without that you cannot do 237. 
then preparing for the system isn't just your any old pre preparation. It is to conquer the 237. We must send our prosperities to 237 and to conquer them. And as I saw how God ha was changing our uh, changing our main lecture hall and remodeling the church, I thought to myself, this was God's a exact plan. And God allowed this corona pandemic so that the people could not come to church. That is why we were able to start this construction. We started this construction during January, and it's been three months. And our Hana, Hana lecture hall will also be, will go through a remodeling. Really, be able to see that this is the God's time schedule to send us ahead to do missions. And you can see that Moses has become the age of 120 now. And in today's passage is the preparation of the, the new age. You can see that Moses is preparing for a a better uh, missions or ministry. Moses knew that his uh, missions has mission has been completed and that he had to raise up a next ministry. But who was used to for that next ministry to continue this gospel movement? It was Joshua. And so around Joshua, there are many prosperities and remnants. Are there people here who think to themselves that they're old? But you can work for God. Is raising up the correct prosperity, our next generation. That is why we must prepare for prepare for the event, uh, the gospel movement for our next our prosperity and the next generation. God is telling God is saying to really have success with the gospel inside of your lives and we are I held on to this passage coming into this uh, new lecture hall And through this Joshua, I would say in, this, in the conclusion, but was able to conquer the land of Canaan, and they were able to do 237. But to take, in, take possession of that land, there is something that we must remember first. That is the most important answer. We must we must know about the three three worlds, and if you're able, and we must let the next generation know about these three worlds. And 
and we must uh, relay this to our next generations so that they can know about these three worlds. And to do 237 then inside, uh, with the gospel, then you must know about the three worlds. And you must relay this. First uh, is the world that we live in, and the second is the Satan's world, and third that will crush all of all of this is the kingdom of God, is the throne. And right now we are living inside of this world, and we are living in Korea. If we work diligently, if we work hard here, then we are able to fill up our stomachs. And you might be able to come to a succession. And you can uh, uh, feel your fulfillments. But then you will die after. But you can't do world evangelization. Yes, you might be able to fill your stomach up but you cannot know, you cannot win over the spiritual world. You must not uh, you must not deny this world. And we must not uh, look down on the, upon this world. And in between the throne and the, the world that we live in, there's something that is, that is in between this. And if you see in Ephesians 2.2, 2, it says, the ruler of the kingdom of the air. It says, when you follow the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, it said, we follow after the being that uh, the ruler of the kingdom of the air. And we can call this the heavenly system. There is a being that has a whole of the kingdom of the air. If you see in Ephesians 6.12, it is the it was the evil spirits. We must pray for the uh, po politicians because Satan could go inside them and use them. But then you can see that uh, it says this presents darkness. It's a spiritual force of evil. Why cannot? Why can't we uh, conquer this world? It's because of the world that we live in. Because we are uh, seized by this world, that is why we are caught by the king, ruler of the kingdom of the air. And we are caught by Satan, and Satan is moving this world. And here, the three organizations came out and is moving this world. The, the third uh, industrial revolution the three organizations took over that. And through that, the fourth industrial revolution will be affected by it. And later on, the fourth industrial revolution will give, uh, will affect, have effect on the fifth re industrial revolution. And this is what we call Nephilim. And this evil spirit is such a, a strong thing. 
God has given us the spiritual power and the spiritual strength, but because we do not know this, we are trying to hold the things of this world and trying to move the world. The Christians have no power. Even the Buddhas, they go through uh, this training, and with that, they send out evil spirits. The Christians are people who do not even have a, enough strength, less strength than shamans. That is because we look towards the things that, of this world. But they don't even take a look at the spiritual things and they don't even know about it. That is why they have no spiritual strength and they're just living their lives. And they work diligently and they make money. And without the spiritual strength, uh, they live their lives. That is why they become slaves, captives, and colonized. Even the people who believe in God, they're caught by in the slaves of money, and uh, they're enslaved by money and captivated by it. And that is why they're living just inside of that. But if you had the spiritual strength, then you would have... Uh, save the world, but because you do not have the spiritual strength, that is why you have become enslaved by money. That is because uh, Satan has the hold of the kingdom of the air. And there is another world, it is the kingdom of God, which breaks down the kingdom of Satan and we call that the blessing of the throne and with this blessing then we can change everything and God spoke about uh, Jesus spoke about the, the kingdom of God and he says pray so that the kingdom of God may be upon you And if you see Mount Olives in Acts 1 3, Jesus spoke of the kingdom of God for 40, years, or 40 days. Why? Because with that one thing, one, uh, that w holding on to that one thing, we are able to break down the kingdom of Satan and change the world. Because we do not know this, Satan has seized all of this. He has seized the uh, great power. And we are just running an errand for Satan. No matter how diligently we work, we have no choice but to face spiritual problems. That is why we are facing an age of spiritual problems. But here God has prepared the blessing of the throne and God has called us here today. And God has called the prosperities and the next generation. Each age by age, this is the method that God has prepared. But there, the prosperity and next generation was always prepared. With this eye, we must see our children. And then God will pour down His blessings. Then what we must enjoy? We must enjoy the blessing of the throne. It is the triune God. And with that, tri that triune God works with, the, with transcending power and He has given us the po uh, power, so, uh, strength, so that we can save the three age. And if we, uh, we must enjoy this first and relay this to our next generation. And receiving this and accepting it, it is identity, and relaying this and transmitting this is authority. And we must uh, leave behind masterpiece. 
We must leave the masterpiece, uh, and we must enjoy this masterpiece to break down the forces of Satan, and able to enjoy the blessing of the throne. And we must enjoy first and relay it to our next prosperity. Then why do we prepare the system? There, there's a reason. And secondly, uh, through Moses, Joshua was able to see the 237 message. That is why it is very important that we seek out the next generation and raise them. When Joshua was able to see through Moses the message of for the 237, the reason that God has let us live till now, there is a reason here. The reason is here. Really hold on to this so that uh, is to raise the next uh, next generation and the prosperities. That is the reason, and really hold on to this. Really, our uh, prosperities. Really remember our remnants through the adults. We must be able to see the two, three, seven, and we the adults must become the platform so that our next generation could see the two, three, seven. Moses lived inside of the palace for forty years. And he was able to have the world education, but Joshua knew that while following Moses. No matter how bad of this person is, he has become globalized inside of the palace. And if you see in Exodus two one through ten, you can see how. Oh, Exodus 3, 1 through 20, God told Moses and gave him the gospel, uh, made him restore the gospel. And has uh, God, through Moses, made the Israelites exit from Egypt. Uh, but there were ten plagues, and the first was making the Nile River into blood. And everybody knew. The other people, the other regions around them knew the work of God. And the Red Sea split. The splitting the Red Sea was to let the whole world know the gospel. And as they were walking through the wilderness, there was the, the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant. And because the Israelites did not know about this covenant, that, that they had no choice but to perish. But the, do you know what was inside of that? It was talking about the 237. And if you see the tabernacle, there was a courtyard for the prayer, children, and the Gentiles. But because they lost hold of this, they became uh, captives. If you lose hold of the covenant, then they have to go as a slave. Our prosperities must go as a slave, captives, and colonized. Now, that is why we must become the platform for our next generation. Joshua was able to see through Moses the 237 and was able to receive the message for the 237. And there is an answer that Joshua has received. Inside of the Bible, the book of Joshua, the sun and the moon has stopped. 
And through, Mo,、uh, through Joshua, they were able to conquer the land of Canaan. No matter what, they must, they must go inside of the land of Canaan. And whoever, anybody could try to block us, but the world evangelization will take place. And the plan of God will continue on. That if God is trying to do this, then who will, who's able to stop this? Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks. I thank you for allowing this great, precious、uh, time. May our、um, believers all hold on to this precious、uh, message and this blessing. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.